I had written five minutes of remarks in which I talked about the important role of journalism and how we must do a better job getting out and about in the country, the importance of empathy and open-mindedness in reporting, and I do feel passionately about all these things. But I changed my mind after I saw President Trump's tweet this morning <clears throat> in which he went farther than he has ever gone in attacking the Times. He said, and I quote, the New York Times reporting is false. They are a true enemy of the people. So I chose not quite to stick to my script. Our publisher, A.G. Sulzberger, issued a strong statement today in which he pointed out that we were doing what, our, what the founders envisioned, that Thomas Jefferson declared, quote, the only security of all is in a free press, and that Ronald Reagan said, there's no more essential ingredient than a free, strong, and independent press. What I would ask the president if he were here, how is it against the interests of the people when Times reporters reported on the abuses of Harvey Weinstein and provoked an international movement? How is it against the interests of the people when the Times reported that there are dozens of dams just like the one that collapsed, killing perhaps hundreds of people in Brazil? How is it against the interests of the people when Times reporters risked their lives to cover wars in Afghanistan and Syria? How it is against the interests of the people when the Times spends months reporting around the world to tell the tragic story of a young migrant woman who died tragically on the streets of New York? And of course, how is it against the interests of the American people when reporters spend more than a year digging into obscure, hidden records to tell the story of the president's wealth and how his father actually made him a wealthy man, a fact that went against his lifelong narrative? Enemy of the people is not just a tossed off line that sounds good in a tweet. It is a particularly pernicious phrase with a deep history. It surfaced in the French Revolution when it was used to set up a tribunal that would punish the political opposition, which it called, quote, the enemies of the people. Ibsen used it, interestingly, to tell the story of a zealous truth teller who veered into elitism. But it became so embraced by dictators and despots that Nikita Khrushchev demanded an end to its use because, quote, it eliminated the possibility of any kind of ideological fight. In researching the history of the phrase, Andrew Higgins of the Times quoted Khrushchev's saying of the phrase, enemy of the people. The formula enemy of the people was specifically introduced for the purpose of physically annihilating people who disagreed with the supreme leader. No president has ever uttered those words in public. I have no doubt that the president's anti-press rhetoric has inspired a sudden and frightening round of attacks on reporters for the Times and other news organizations, including the holding of David Kirkpatrick, a reporter who was stopped on a routine trip to Cairo. It used to be this was the one province where we could call any president for help. If an American reporter was captured or injured in war, you could count on the White House to help. That every president, no matter his party, understood our role in the world, even if they didn't always love us. Sadly, I'm not sure who I would call today. Thank you for this award. It means a great deal coming from a place that is committed to quote unquote, truth well told, that is a particularly comforting notion today. No one wins awards alone. I have many colleagues who actually deserve this, and a handful of them are here, so I'd like to thank Joe Kahn, the managing editor, Elizabeth Bue Miller, the Washington bureau chief, and Julie Bloom, one of the stars of our national desk. They make me look good. Thank you so much.